worship this morning. So good to see you here. Bright, sunny day. This is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we can be because we have a Savior in Jesus Christ who's been raised from the dead. And we're not just celebrating that this has happened to Him, but what it means for all of us. And so we'll be talking about that a little bit later in the service. Um, but before we get to that, I want to encourage all of you to, to please uh, fill out the member and visitor uh, worship card. And those will be uh, uh, received during the opening hymn. Also, this is a second Sunday, and so we have a special uh, collection. Um, any loose offering uh, that is included in the offering will go to ELCA Good Gifts. And that is an effort by the ELCA to fight world hunger. Uh, $15, for instance, will pay for a rooster, and uh, $30 will, will pay for a piglet. It's kind of a fun way uh, to go about that. And so, uh, so be aware that that's happening today as well. Uh, we have a, a new member class that is going to be starting after the second service at 11.30 this morning, and uh, several people are uh, going to be a part of that. If, if you're interested in learning more about our Saviors, uh, you are welcome to come as well. Otherwise, the, the, the rest of the announcements you can be reading for yourself. And let us all rise as we begin our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, <coughs> receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in God, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Be at peace, let us pray to the Lord.
with great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsibly. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down from the ear, upon the ear of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Harmon, flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. The second reading is from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in the darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thomas, who was 
called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, and Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you might have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Praise you. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, oh, what good news we receive here this morning. The resurrected Christ appears to his disciples and he gives them a greeting of peace. He breathes the Holy Spirit upon them. And we recognize and notice that not only does the story speak of their experience of Christ, but it reveals what's possible for us as we live by faith. That Jesus' greeting of peace is peace for us, that Jesus breathes on us the Holy Spirit as well. So, O oh Lord, move us to an ever greater faith. Help us to believe and then recognize that as we believe, we do indeed have life with Him. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be worthy of you, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So we have good news today, wonderful news, and this isn't if you haven't gotten a hint already. This isn't just good news about some ancient history event in Jerusalem so many centuries ago that, that we love this story so much that we're going to decide we're going to talk about this history story here as well. No, no. Yeah, there was a whole lot of good news and excitement there in that room for those disciples, and then eventually, a week later, for Thomas as well. But this is good news for us, because what is being revealed to us here in this text is that the resurrection of Jesus Christ means life for us all. It reveals something about the world. It reveals something about our existence that maybe we don't often think about enough. And that is this, that because of what has happened to Jesus and our unity with Jesus through our baptism, because of that empty tomb, because our Lord lives again, because he has conquered death forever, this universe is a perfectly safe place for us to be in. No. This world, this universe, this cosmos is a perfectly safe place for us to be and live and thrive. That's right. But pastor, how can that be? Let me tell you my 
perfectly safe place for us to be. Ah, oh, but it is. It is. And let's just take a look at what happened in this text. The disciples are gathered together in that room. The doors are locked. They are defined by the fear that is in their hearts. They've heard the story that, that Jesus has appeared to Mary Magdalene. That, that happened just before this text in John's Gospel. They've heard that. And then there was that whole encounter, you know, what was going on with Peter and, and the beloved disciple as well. But there they are that evening, the day that the empty tomb was discovered, and they are locked in a room for fear. Because just as the Romans had crucified their leader, and now there's talk he may be alive, maybe the Romans are going to come after them as well. Huh? And if this Jesus does it somehow show up, then certainly the centurions are going to be breaking into the doors. Yeah, they're afraid. They're terrified. The cross may be their destiny as well. But Jesus does appear in that room. And he gives them this message. Very first words. Let's pay attention to that. The very first words that the resurrected Christ shares with his disciples, it is a message of peace. Peace be with you. Peace is your gift. Peace is available to you. Quit being afraid. Don't feel the terror that you are feeling in your hearts. May you know peace. And they rejoice. That's the way that the text says. Ooh, here he is rejoicing. I wonder though, as they're rejoicing in the Lord, are they also thinking of the Romans right behind them as well? And then Jesus says it again, doesn't he? <coughs> Peace be with you. Jesus recognizes that for followers of Jesus, it isn't enough for him to just appear there in the flesh, alive, resurrected. He must continue to reassure them with a message of peace. Peace be with you. And then that's not even enough. He breathes on them. He breathes on them. Receive the Holy Spirit, he says. And this echoes back to a story way back in the beginning of Genesis. You've heard the story of, of God creating the first human being, and, and he gets down in the mud and the dirt, and he, and he forms this human being, the first human, and it's just some kind of a mud statue <laughs> made of earth and dirt and all that. Literally, in Hebrew, he's an earthling. He's an earth creature. And there's nothing to him until what? What does God do to bring life to this earthling creature made of the dirt? God breathes into him. And there's life. And there's life. Well, you know, in this text where it says Jesus breathes on them, and I had some coffee this morning, so don't, don't let me breathe on you. Right? <laughs> Jesus didn't have any coffee. You know, it says Jesus breathed on them, but literally in the Greek, Jesus breathed into them. How about that? Breathed into them. It's not enough to hear the words, peace be with you, peace, peace, peace. It's not enough to even just see him, to see him in the flesh, to see the wounds. He breathes the Spirit into them, and suddenly they have life. They have life. They have power. They have meaning. They have real peace. And they believe. They don't just have the information. They believe with their heart. And life in Christ begins with that gift of the Spirit. Oh, what a gift is given to them. Now, of course, this text is best known as being the Doubting Thomas story, right? Right? In fact, if you've been around church for a while, you know there's a whole pattern here in, in Lutheran churches. We have Easter Sunday with all this pomp and circumstance, right? And then the Sunday after Easter, we get Doubting Thomas. Yes, that's the pattern. 
But I want to come to uh, Thomas's defense here this morning. For you see, what we've discovered here in John chapter 20 is, is you have Mary Magdalene having this amazing experience in Jesus there in the garden where he didn't recognize Jesus at first and she didn't. And then, you know, thinks he might be a gardener of all things. And until Jesus actually utters the name Mary, she doesn't realize who it is. But at that moment she does, oh wow. Magic. And then likewise, the disciples have this experience of the risen Lord. He appears in that locked room. He gives them that message of peace. He breathes within them, yes. And so Thomas hears all about this. He wasn't there that night. I don't know what else he had to do that night. You know, he was busy. He had something going on. I don't know. But he wasn't there that night. He hears the words and the stories. We've seen the Lord, Thomas, but he won't accept it. He doesn't feel like it's right. He feels like he's been chipped. I want to experience that too. <laughs> How lucky you are. You got to experience the risen Christ. I haven't. I want that. I need that. I need to experience what Mary Magdalene experienced. What you guys experienced. I need that. And what happens? He gets that. The next week. The next Sunday. The Sunday after Easter. Like today. <laughs> That's why we always use this text, right? And there he sees and has this experience of the risen Christ. But something profound is shared. Remember, it's not enough to just hear Jesus' words. It's not enough. It isn't even enough to simply have the ability to see the wounds on Jesus' hands and feet or the wound in his side. It takes faith. It takes belief. It takes the gift of that Holy Spirit. And it takes a true living experience of Christ in our real lives. And that possibility is not limited only to those who were gathered those, those 40 days of experiencing the resurrection, resurrected Christ. Those experiences are available to us today and now. You know that? The Spirit has been breathed into you. You have been given life at your birth. You are created in the image of God. And through the waters of baptism, a second birth, a spiritual birth, you're born again. And that Spirit dwells within you right now so that you may come to believe. It's not enough to simply know the stories. This isn't some academic exercise. Don't, don't impress me with your biblical knowledge. This doesn't impress God. What has it done for your heart? Has it moved you to believe? Blessed are those who have not seen, but have come to believe. That's what it's about. What has God done for your soul? For your mind, the way you live, the life that you have, that's what's available to you. And the wonderful thing in this text, I love how it ends. Because chapter 20 ends with this two, three verse, two verses, that just tell us again, remind us, so this is why this whole thing was written in the first place. But these were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. That's why. So that you might believe too. And that through believing, you might have life in His name. Life in Jesus' name. That's the purpose. This is what's available to you. And so every moment that we live in terror and fear, every moment when we have this mind that convinces us that I'm not good enough, that I'm gonna, gonna embarrass myself, that that you know I can't struggle this way, that I can't make it another day. Every day that our mind plays 
And those kind of wicked thoughts is a moment that is wasted. It is a moment where you are being fooled and being torn away from the truth. But life in Christ, life that is one that reflects belief, is one that recognizes that Jesus' words, peace be with you, are true and available to you in this life. Do not be afraid, but believe. Be bold. This universe is a perfectly safe place for us to be. Not because we don't have struggles. Not even because we will not face the darkness of death. We will. But death is overcome through Christ. We need not be afraid. How wonderful it is that the resurrected Christ comes to us, wounds and all. Those wounds don't disappear. They're part of who he is. Your wounds too. They're part of who you are. And they're awful. And they hurt. And they're terrible. But do not let your mind dwell on those wounds. Do not let those wounds define you. Maybe yesterday, but Saturday, that's a great day for we're doing work around the house, and maybe you were doing that. You got your hammers on, you got nails, you got to nail things in, and you were distracted, you got many things on your mind, and, and, you, and you take that hammer, and what did you do? You boom! Oh, you hit that thumb right on. You broke your thumb. But you're stubborn. You're not going to go to urgent care. You're yeah, probably for another week or two as the pain gets worse and worse. What happens to you when you go through life with that broken thumb? How do you feel an hour later? How do you feel the next day? Where is your mind dwelling? Oh, this thumb. Oh. The mind will do that. But that broken thumb does not define you. Peace be with you. That struggle that you are seeking to overcome, you are empowered by Christ to work through it, knowing that the Lord is with you. All of these are written so that you might have life in Him. Life with Him. So believe. Believe. Receive the Holy Spirit. And believe. And know. With all of your heart. That this universe. Is indeed. A perfectly safe place. For you to be. Through Jesus Christ. Amen.
triune of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for those who witness of the church, the owners of creation, and all who are in need. <coughs> Holy God, you speak peace in the presence of fear, and create peace in the midst of chaos. The storm rains, rage, and wind all bring calm. Protect people and animals from the dangers of weather. For damning lands and homes. Lord, in your mercy.
will now receive the offer.
You entered our sorrows, and Jesus our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city, and with infinite love, he granted your people life. And the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So remembering his death, we cry out, Amen! Amen! Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen! Amen! Amen. And trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen! Amen! Amen. Amen. O God, you are breath, send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread, feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly, O God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of the tree of life with fruits for all and leaves to heal the nations. Grant us such life in him. The life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seen. For our communion distribution, this morning all of you are welcome to receive this sacrament of only communion. It isn't required that you be a member of this church or that you be Lutheran. What's required is that, that uh, Jesus offers a greeting of peace for all of us. And through baptism, he has breathed the Holy Spirit into every single one of us. We need his grace. We need his compassion. And that is what is offered here at this table. All are welcome. Body of Christ in you. Body of Christ in you. Body of Christ in you.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace, we'll serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.